the shelter. Come on in. Welcome to the community shelter of Union County. My name is Victoria May and I'm the on-site operations director. Now, tonight was supposed to be Boots and Bowties 2020, Outlaw Edition, but unfortunately it's become Boots and Bowties 2020 Home Edition. So we decided to pivot and not let take COVID take this away from us. Great opportunity for those of us who have not been to the shelter before to be able to get a tour of the shelter and see some of the inside of it. So we're super excited that you guys are here tonight. As you go around, there's gonna be different links at the bottom of the chat box and in the actual Facebook Live to get you around to different areas as we talk about them. Also down in the chat box, if you've got questions as we're going around, just let me know and I'll answer those as best we can. So here starting in the shelter, very first place is the Henry B. Smith Jr. reception. Henry B. Smith Jr. was a local prominent attorney who has unfortunately passed away, but his wife, Nancy Stephen, has stayed involved in the shelter, both as our marketing contractor, and she and her hus current husband were also boot sponsors this year. So we're very excited to have them come alongside us. If you guys want to follow me, we'll head on to the shelf, to the pantry. Welcome to the pantry. So as you see in our tagline, emergency shelter, food, rehousing. This is the first part of food for us. Now, why is food such an important thing for us here at the shelter? Now, number one for us, it's just the right thing to do when we've got a hungry neighbor to fill that need. But number two, the other really important reason is that every time we're able to save someone a dollar on their grocery budget, that's able to put a, month, a dollar back into their rent budget. So hopefully they'll never need to come into shelter due to an episode of homelessness. So if you're wanting to get involved that way, there's an ongoing needs. You can actually get to our needs list online. Should also be a link down in the bottom. It's gonna look a lot like this. And so it's a lot of the shelf stable stuff that people use at home. Beans, peanut butter, jelly, cereal, mac and cheese, grits, oatmeal. We go through a ton of stuff each year. Last year, we distributed over 350,000 pounds of food through our pantry. Now, just with our COVID drive-through pantries, we've distributed over a quarter of a million pounds to our hungry neighbors in need. If you wanna follow along, I'll show you the next part of the pantry. So here we've got hygiene items. Again, items that have been donated from community members like you. Now, food stamps don't pay for items like this. So we're able to come alongside of our neighbors and help them with these things as well. So baby wipes, soap, shampoo, conditioner, all the things that you would use at home. Now, another one of our food programs is actually a great partnership with another nonprofit called Rice and Beans. Rice and Beans is a nonprofit that works with chronically homeless in both Mecklenburg and Union County, goes out, provides hot meals, and comes alongside of them. Now, when they started doing this in Union County because of COVID, they started identifying a lot of people that were still in housing, a lot of seniors that had some grocery needs as well. And so every Thursday night when they're coming out to Union County and doing this feeding program, they're taking 40 bags of food out to some local uh, clients that are low income and seniors. So lots of higher protein items, things that are easy for them to heat up because they're not able to cook usually very, um, do a lot of scratch cooking where they're at. Follow along with me. We've got other pantry bags that are ready for our drive through pantry that's gonna be Tuesday night uh, from five to 6 p.m. So if anyone ever has a need, tell them to go to our website and you can find details about dates and times for our pantries. We also partner with Common Heart, uh, another local nonprofit that does pantries here in Union County. Uh, these are some of our bags that are gonna be going out on Tuesday with lots of stuff like cereal and pasta, there's some ramen noodles, some tuna, all the things that people can use right now. Now, moving into our new facility, one of the absolutely great things is that it gave us more space for our food. Now, before we had reach-in freezers and reach-in fridges, now, We've got lots more space. We've got bags ready to go out Tuesday night and lots of different items for the pantry and then our fridge as well, especially used for our feeding program. We've got box lunches ready to go out. Now, you might wonder, where does all this food come from? 
most of our food is donated and you can actually donate as well as i said back in the pantry and that's the area that you're looking right now is our donation drop off so if you're coming and you're wondering how to drop off on the other side of this door uh, it says donation drop off just ring that doorbell and staff will help you in now every food item that comes through here we weigh we want to make sure that we are telling the community how much they've helped us and making sure that we're good stewards of the food that we get in so every piece of food that comes in gets weighed on there and logged. Last year, over 148,000 pounds of food were donated by community members. Why don't you guys follow me on to the next area, which is our dishwashing area right off of our kitchen. So meal groups, if you're coming in and you need some dishwashing help, can I recommend teenagers? It's great because then when you take them back home, they can't say they don't know how to do dishes. Next, we've got our Goulston kitchen. So Goulston sponsored this kitchen. Goulston is also a boot sponsor. So we're very, very thankful for them as well. Last year, this kitchen put out almost 75,000 meals to people in need here in the community. Now, we really had to pivot because of COVID, making sure that we kept our clients safe and our volunteers and staff, but we've, def we've definitely rolled with the punches. So if you've ever been to the old shelter, this was a huge improvement. Our big focus coming in when we designed this kitchen was to be able to prepare food safely, quickly, and also facilitate volunteer groups. Now, because of COVID, we've had to limit volunteer groups a little bit, but we are really looking forward to the day that we're able to have some of our big groups come back out again. So if you'll follow me right this way, we'll head on to the dining room. Welcome to our dining hall. Matthew and Stephanie Belk and the Better Car People, again, boot sponsors, sponsored our dining hall. And this also allowed us to really respond to COVID well. Now at the old shelter, we had seats for 44 people, but it was 44 people that definitely weren't socially distanced. Now we were able to spread people out. We've got two seating times where our shelter clients eat during the first half. We do a deep clean and then external clients who don't live here at the shelter are able to come in and gotta get a hot meal. Now that's something a lot of people when they find out are surprised about. You don't have to live at the shelter to get a hot meal. We do that every day from 8.30 to 9 a.m., 12.30 to 1 p.m., and 6.30 to 7 p.m. All you have to do is come in and we'll get you right fixed up. We could not have responded to COVID as efficiently at the old shelter as we have in this new shelter. The expanse in square feet, which is almost three times what we had at the old shelter, has been absolutely phenomenal. Now we've been in this shelter for about a year and a half, and the way we were able to do that was a huge capital campaign that spanned a few years. This is actually our donor wall of people who donated during the capital campaign. And so a lot of the names you'll start to see that they don't just give one time, they're people that stay involved at the shelter and give financially again and again. So if you gave to us both operating budget every year, but also to the capital campaign, thank you guys. You were really able to help us uh, get ahead of COVID and help our neighbors who are in need. If you guys wanna follow me, And welcome to our Tyson Foods activity room. Tyson, also a boot sponsor. Now, this room has a lot of things going on in it. Very first thing, bathrooms. Now, you might be saying bathrooms aren't very exciting. Well, first of all, they are for us because at the old shelter, we didn't have enough bathrooms for the amount of people we had. But the other thing that's so important about these particular bathrooms are the showers in the back. So again, clients who are not staying here in shelter are able to access those services. So a lot of our chronically homeless folks that are living out in the woods are able to come and get a hot shower. And there's dignity in that to be able to get clean at the end of the day. And that was a big focus for us coming into the shelter, providing the services that we do with dignity. Now, right behind me, couple of beautiful art prints. Now those of y'all from Union County and beyond might recognize them. They're Bill Colt's work. When we moved in, he also did some other pieces for us in the men's dorm. These specifically were meant to represent Union County because again, we are located in Monroe, but we serve all of Union County. So our neighbors in Marshville, Waxhaw, Indian Trail, Stallings, all these different areas when they're hungry, when they're homeless can come to us. So when you look at the art, you can see the Monroe Courthouse. You can see the Waxhaw uh, water tower and train. You can see a picture of the shelter actually as a family's walking in. And then with our history of agriculture. So the other thing that Bill did for us were these snazzy t-shirts. 
So he designed this limited edition art, which you can only get tonight to go on your shirt. Well, actually not tonight. We'll take orders for a little bit. There should be a link on Facebook uh, Live where you're able to go and order those shirts. So these performance t-shirts are $25 and the performance polos are $40. I'm telling you, I'm loving this shirt. So this might be my work outfit for next week. You're good with that, right, Kathy? Thank you guys. Next up is our library. So again, a resource for our clients who are here that they're able to come and get a book. The little kids can get some coloring books or just something for mom or dad to read them at night or something for our adults to keep them busy while they're here. And next up in our activity room is our computer lab. So again, internet access is a huge thing. If you're working on your resume, you're looking for a job, this is gonna give you some of the resources that you need. Now, our activity lab is getting ready to undergo a transformation and become our employment lab. It's a brand new exciting project that we're doing with South Piedmont Community College where our clients are gonna be able to come in during lab times, work on building their resume, job searches, interview skills, and exploring the education and career opportunities here in Union County. We've got a case manager who's gonna be working specifically on that program, and so we're really excited to offer yet another service to our clients who are here in shelter that are gonna get them more stable in the long term. If you guys wanna follow along with me this way, And welcome to our courtyard. Now, if you're looking over my shoulder and you're going, what's their tent at the homeless shelter? I thought we were trying to get people out of tents into housing. Well, the reason for that, recent and COVID yet again. So when we first had the COVID outbreak, we were very worried about what we would do if someone came up with symptoms of COVID. We really don't have a way to isolate people. We wanted to make sure that we kept everyone safe here in shelter. So we reached out to the local health department who's really been with us all along the way, helping us make the best choices for our clients and the best choices for staff. So this is actually our isolation tent. So if someone comes up with any symptoms or a fever, we're able to isolate them in this tent until we're able to get them into testing. Thankfully, it will be for a very short period of time. And also thankfully we have not had to use it very often. Also here in the courtyard is our grill where meal groups are able to come out, grill hamburgers, hot dogs, and an area for the clients to be able to come and just hang out, especially when the, the weather is so lovely, like when it finally turns to fall around here. <laughs> Next up, you guys are gonna follow me right on into the shelter. Okay, well, welcome to the shelter building. This is one of our lovely shelter coordinators, Miss Jamie. There's 24 seven coverage here at the shelter. So at two o'clock in the morning, when there is someone needing something, shelter coordinators are able to address that need. Now a big focus here in the new shelter was addressing any security needs for our clients. So we've got our camera system that's up 24 seven. We've got a buzzer system. Now, a couple of reasons the buzzer, buzzer system is so important. The front door locks automatically, so staff is able to check in as people are coming in the door after hours. And the buzzer system is also for our family wing, which I'll take you guys back there in a few minutes. Now, our family wing is only for clients who are checked into the family program, so that's a way that we're able to keep our kids safe. Now, back behind me is our Atrium Health Wellness Center. Uh, Atrium Health is also a boot sponsor as well. So this area gives us a spot for our clients to be able to do their intakes in private. So lots of confidential information and really wanting to give them privacy around that as well. If you guys will follow me to the family wing. Janie, will you buzz me in? Yes. Thank you. Now, the first thing you see as you come down the hallway is this absolutely fantastic decal. Yes, it's a decal, not a mural. This was provided by Atlantic Pinstripe and Company, owned by Mike and Laura Montemuro. Laura is actually on our board of directors. So for us, 
we wanted the first thing our kids to see when they came into shelter was something bright and something beautiful. During such a scary time for our kids, we wanted to make sure that they saw the light at the end of the tunnel and that we cared about them. Our family wing was sponsored by the Braswell Trust, the Brankus Foundation, and the Cannon Foundation. Now, we needed a new shelter. Our old building was old, and it wasn't keeping up with the amount of space that we needed. But we didn't even have a family wing. Our families were in local budget motels. Safety was a big thing for us getting our families here, being able to do longer length of stays. And that was really something that being able to build this new shelter made possible for us. And these foundations, trusts, and foundations made that possible for us, and we're so incredibly thankful. If you guys want to follow me, I'll show you the rest of the family way. This is our family kitchenette. So most of our clients eat their meals in the dining hall, but families sometimes have special needs. So baby formula, baby food, they're able to have access in here to what they need for their kids. And then one of my favorite areas in the shelter is our family lounge. Now, the family lounge was uh, sponsored by the city of Monroe. Now they also do a yearly operating grant for us, which allows us to keep the lights on and the water running. We've also got spaces for our kids to play, read, do their homework, and just be kids. We wanted to make sure that our kids were safe and happy. And it's really great when you come down here at the end of the day, and there's just a herd of kids and they're hanging out and they're just being kids. So this is our family lounge space. And we've actually got permission from one of the families to peek into their rooms real fast. family rooms are set up like this where there's two sets of bunk beds that's six of the seven rooms uh, one of the rooms actually has a third set of bunk beds as well so right now we have uh, mom and her daughter in here and they're able to be here have peace have quiet have safety so this room is actually sponsored by Windsor Windows Windsor Windows provided all of the windows and doors for our new facility and family room seven is triangle brick they provided every brick for both of these buildings the families have four bathrooms that they share now one thing that was really important for us the reason or our bathrooms here are a little bit different than our singles these have tubs instead of showers our little kids take baths so we wanted to be really deliberate when we designed this new shelter to make sure that we address the needs of our clients as best as possible. So I'm gonna run you guys back down through and let you see some of the other rooms here. So Ingram and Missy Walter's family room, they are from Bob Mayberry Hyundai, who's our presenting sponsor. Hargett Electric, Jackson Hargett is on our board of directors. Tyler and Amy Ubelli, who are from Better Car People. Next up is room number two, the McGee Brothers. Mike McGee is actually our general contractor and was able to get us a number of items donated in kind to lessen the cost of this new shelter. And our seventh family room is the Senator Tommy Tucker room. Senator Tommy Tucker is a former state senator who was really a champion for us at the state senate. If you guys want to follow along with me, we will go ahead and go check out the women's dorm. Got anything on Facebook Live? Any questions yet? Not yet? I must be answering all of y'all's questions. You're good at this. <laughs> Welcome to our ladies' lounge. So this is our Louise P. Singleton and Martha H. Pinkney Women's Lounge. Now, I'm guessing most of you guys on our Facebook Live don't know who these people are. Let me tell you who they are. Laverne serves on our board of directors and has been an absolutely phenomenal volunteer for a number of years. That's her mother and her grandmother. 
When she had the opportunity to sponsor a room in memorial of her mother and grandmother, she took the chance because they raised her to be a strong, phenomenal woman who gave back to her community. I think for me, what's been so special every time I come into this room is really seeing how these little differences that we make in relationships in teaching our families how to serve can have such a long-standing impact on our family. So Laverne, if you're out there, we love you. This is a beautiful art piece that was done by the wife of one of our former board of directors, Julie Edwards. You should check out her art. It's absolutely phenomenal. She's also a Union County artist. Uh, it's really meant to represent our female clients, their journey here in the shelter, coming back into wholeness. So we're not actually going to go back into the women's dorm, but I am going to give you a little bit of a peek. So this is the Charlotte Pike and Foundry and the Dow Foundation Women's Dorm. They also provided the sponsorship for our men's dorm as well. And the lobby, Novant Health Lobby. Thank you so much, Novant. So we talked about food and you've seen the shelter. Let me tell you a little bit more about the shelter, but first let's get into the courtyard. So, the reason the shelter has been so fantastic, you can tell I love numbers, y'all. Last year we had over 27,000 overnight stays with 493 neighbors who were able to have shelter overnight services. Now during COVID, we had to change our model of service for certain clients. With some of our older clients with health issues, they were medically vulnerable and were definitely at risk if they caught COVID for greater complications and we wanted to make sure that we kept them safe. So 61 of our clients so far in that bracket, we've been able to put them in local motels, keep them a little more quarantined and keep them safe in case of any health issues. Now behind us, it might be kind of hard to see because it's starting to get dark out, is our playground. Another thing that we wanted to make sure was our kids had a safe place to stay while they were here. So that was actually a board project for us to put in before we moved into the shelter. That was fun because it was a nice rainy weekend and of course with North Carolina clay, you can imagine what they looked like at the end of the weekend. Okay, guys, that's our shelter piece of it. Any questions about that? Got a quiet group coming in. Okay, if you guys want to follow me, we'll head on down to the program services wing. Welcome to our program services wing where the offices are located. I know everybody's most exciting part of the tour is the offices. First up, we have our Kathy and Chris Bragg executive office. So these actually represent two different boot sponsorships as well. Bragg Mediation, which is Chris's company and Kathy helps him as well. Uh, and their daughter Ellie of Leitner and Bragg Law both did boot sponsorships. So we're very thankful for them as well. Next up on the hallway, we have our Carlton and Carol Tyson housing office. So again, three lines of service, emergency shelter, food, rehousing. This is where the magic happens. So with all of the things that come along with rehousing, doing an application, application fees, talking to landlords, filling out check requests, making sure that they've got the furniture they need to move in, our house managers make sure that that all gets done. Last year, we had 104 households that we moved back into independent housing. Over the last five years, that's been 684 households that we moved back home. During COVID, 48 households, including 32 children, have gotten back home. Now, in addition to everything with homelessness, there's also been a wave of eviction coming, and we're going to continue to see it over the next months and years. So far, we've provided 92 households with over $93,000 in eviction relief because if they never have to come into shelter, that's the best option. Down this hallway, we have more case manager hallway, uh, offices and we've got some admin offices as well. 
Next, we have the Martha Smith Allen Philanthropy Office. Now, philanthropy fundraising is always important for a nonprofit. It's especially important during COVID. We lost the ability to do boots and bow ties in person, and so we've had to get creative. So Jeff, who's on the other side of this camera, mm -hmm. has been our fundraising mastermind and helping us really overcome some of these humps. We have our nutrition services manager has her quick cut through to the kitchen. We have the Laura and Don Hinkle volunteer office. So if you want to volunteer, there should be a link at the bottom of your screen, unionshelter.org forward slash volunteer. Last year, we had 23,000 hours of volunteer service. The staff is absolutely incredible, but unfortunately, there's not enough hours in the day. So our volunteers are able to help out with that. Got a question? Mark Jaworski asks, what about mail delivery? What about mail delivery for our clients here? So we get all of our mail sorted up at that intake desk where the shelter coordinators were, and then clients as they come up are able to get their uh, mail from up there. So this is the Laura and Don Hinkle Volunteer Office. We have our Wells Fargo Foundation, Client Services, another case management office. We have the Sharon and Lynn Ray staff break room. So it's amazing when you're able to actually eat your lunch with your coworkers and not eat it at your desk, which is what we did at the old office. Okay. Next up, we have the Ben and Carol Williams Learning Center. Now, before COVID started, again, we keep saying before COVID started, this was our classroom where we met with clients to do one-on-one -on -one learning and group learning opportunities. And again, we've had to pivot because of COVID. And so now we've got it for COVID response, but we're also using it for our employment lab case manager. She is the one who's helping clients as they learn new skills about educational and career opportunities while they're here in shelter. So really making sure that we're staying true to the purpose of that. And next up we have wasn't sure the light was on. The Don and Betty Wilburn Conference Room. Now, Don and Betty Wilburn are really special to us here at the shelter. Their first gift that they gave to us was the seed money for what became the capital campaign here at the shelter. Now, they gave that money, but they stayed involved. That was a really cause, a cause close to their heart. So Don built our beautiful conference table that we've got up there. They helped with one of our families that had moved out of shelter into housing with their Christmas last year, a single mom, to make sure that their kids had a great Christmas. And their daughter, Terry, has continued to volunteer as well and comes to the shelter frequently to help prepare meals with her group of friends. Okay, if you guys want to follow me back up front, we've made a big loop. Do we have any final questions? Okay, well, thank you guys so much for coming along as we got to see some various parts of the shelter. Boots and bow ties is definitely a little bit different this year. But one thing that didn't change was our sponsors. Even though we weren't having an in-person event, our sponsors all said, we're in, we're with you guys. So I wanna start off with having a shout out and a thank you to those guys. Our Lone Star presenting sponsor, Bob Mayberry Hyundai. Our Platinum Pistol Sponsors, Atrium Health, Nancy Stephen and Joe Griffin, Good Stewart Ministries, Tyson Foods, Better Car People. Our Gold Nugget Sponsors, Union Power Cooperative, Bill Colt, Goulston, and AFL. Our Silver Spur Sponsors, Whitley Mortgage, Wanda S. Horton Interior Design, Hargett Electric Company, Geological Resources Incorporated, Wingate University, Century Contractors, Spivey in Insurance Group, State Utility Contractors, Perry, Bundy, Plyler, and Long, Leitner and Bragg Law, Bragg Mediation, and our Tumbleweed Sponsors, Church of the Redeemer, White's Mortuary, Poultry Equipment Plus Incorporated, Griner Bio One, Robbins and Associate, Insurance Agency, the Law Offices of William K. Goldfarb, Sodoma Law Union, Truist Bank, and Michelle A. Sarno, CPA.
those were our sponsors that came alongside us. Now, normally at Boots, it's a big party, lots of food, games, a great auction, and a fund the need. Unfortunately, we're not able to do the first part, and we're really hoping that Boots 2021 will be able to happen. But we still got a need here at the shelter. Homelessness didn't take a vacation. We're not able to quarantine from hunger. Our neighbors still have a need, and we need your help. There should be a link down at the bottom about how to donate. And we really need you guys to come alongside of us. Let me tell you a little bit about what your money would do. $9,000 moves 11 families from homelessness to independent housing. $4,500 provides 360 overnight stays in our emergency shelter. $3,000 provides 1,200 pantry or in shelter meals to people experiencing hunger insecurity. $900 provides approximately one month of eviction prevention funds for a COVID impacted household. $480 provides 10 nights of a motel stay for a COVID vulnerable client. $240 provides 13 hours of job coaching and case management services. $100 provides multiple bags of food for five people laid off from work. $50 provides one breakfast for community shelter residents. $25 buys three days of toilet paper for the shelter, and $10 buys personal toiletries for one resident experiencing homelessness. Now, a lot of you guys out there have probably been affected by COVID as well. And so you might be saying, I can't do $100. Well, could you do 10 over the next year? And at that point, your $10 has added up to 120, which is more, which is more than 100. So we've got the opportunity when you go onto our website to give quarterly, give monthly, or even give one time. But every little bit helps. I always hear from people, this is all I could bring. I'm sorry it wasn't more. But the thing is, is when all of our small gifts add up together, we're able to address this really real and pressing need in our community. So again, we're so sorry that Boots and Bowties 2020 is a little bit different this year, but we're glad we're able to show you more about the shelter. And again, donate, volunteer, come see us, stay involved. Thank you guys so much, and we hope to see you at Boots and Bowties 2021.